This is a Lamborghini Gallardo, a four-wheel drive, two-seat supercar powered by a V10 5-litre engine. It is owned by Peter de Fiat, a man who likes to explain that his children must have got all their good looks from him because his wife still has hers. Peter is a mechanic, but no ordinary mechanic, and his Lamborghini is his laboratory. His field of study? Making cars perform better, and he does it with electronics. what a chip means and that is long changed since the original days of the chip where you actually change the chip in the computer box to reprogram the performance parameters of it. Uh, our product we call it a uni chip giving the implication that it's a universal chip in other words it can do what all other chips could, can do combined plus it can do a lot more. To prove his point he took an already insanely quick Gallardo and made it quicker much quicker and brought in some of the best in the business to help him. Peter de Wert approached me to get involved in this project because I've had 20 years of experience in testing cars. And he also approached me because I own a very handy piece of equipment, the RaceLogic V-Box. And with the V-Box we can measure all kinds of performance parameters very accurately. And uh, we can take that information that it gathers, it saves to a memory card, it uh, interfaces with the global positioning satellites, and uh, from, from that information we can get an exact speed and position of the vehicle on the globe. And we then take that data which we collect to a memory card and we can analyse it afterwards and come up with some uh, very interesting performance numbers. The Unichip, developed by Peter, are manufactured in his laboratory-like factory near Pretoria, South Africa. Here he explains how it's done. OK, so what we want to demonstrate here or we'll show you is our X-ray machine, it's the latest state-of-the-art uh, product that's available. So basically the part you're looking at is this little part of my finger, which we are zooming in using the X-ray machine. What we are seeing there are the actual wires of the actual silicon chip in the little part connecting the silicon to the individual legs. You can go in even more on it and you can see the actual quality of the bond of the wires. So you can go beyond testing your own product, you can make sure that the parts you get from your suppliers are actually proper and on, on standard. So we use this mostly for quality control and after the fact inspection, should anything go wrong, we analyze it to see why any failures could happen and how to prevent in the future. Okay, so this is basically a computerized pick and place machine. In other words, it picks and places the various parts because the boards are so compact and the parts are so uh, as small as possible, uh, it is not possible to build a product like this by hand. So it's all computer built. Uh, as it picks up every part, it actually com verifies that the part is perfectly positioned. If it's slightly skewed, it will actually correct it before it places it on the board. So being the first board of the day, they're building, they check it with a microscope to make sure all the placement and everything is correct before they do the whole run. Because obviously if you do build a problem into it, you build a lot of problems into it, all the units very quickly. At this machine, we pass a panel of four unichips together at a time. The machine scans the, all parts on the board and then actually compares it with a known image as to what it should be like. It will detect any wrong parts, skewed parts. We can set the sensitivity of the machine, so we always set it over sensitive. So that even if the printing by the manufacturer on the part isn't exact, it will show it up as a fault. All faults are then visually checked and magnified by the operator to see whether it is indeed a fault or not. At this stage, all the unit chips are encased in an aluminium box, it's then filled with epoxy resin to protect it against vibration and moisture ingression to make it a tougher product. The See, it's got the serial number on it now. It's a fully functioning computer that we add to the vehicle with which we can drive extra injectors, control turbochargers, do many, many things more than what the normal chip can do. And that's also showcasing the Lamborghini 
that with a normal chip you will not be able to achieve what we have achieved with a unit chip in this particular project. So we can have different boost levels, we can have different performance factors, we can control the clutch to some degree uh, because the guy has a robotic clutch. These are all things that you cannot do with a normal a normal chip. Clearly a Lamborghini Gallardo is a very fast car even in its standard form. It's light, it's got a very powerful V10 engine. Um, but what it did before really pales into insignificance. So in the case of this car we saw that in its modified form it can now accelerate from 0 to 200 kilometers an hour in a little more than 9 seconds. And in fact it travels from 100 to 200 kilometers an hour in about 4.5 seconds. The original say it's about 500 horsepower on the flywheel at the coast, so we are making at this altitude about 1,300. So we're making more than three times the power it originally made at this altitude. The more 200 times will be governed solely by the amount of traction that you can get. So the bigger rubber you're going to put on the softer tires, the faster the more 200 times will come. But really will you get you want a better idea as to how fast it really is will probably be the 100 to 200 times and the 200 to 300 kilometers per hour time. This morning so we ran under five seconds from 100 to 200 kilometers per hour which is faster than most cars will be from zero to 100. Next stop a disused military airstrip to test just that acceleration times from 100 to 200 and 200 to 300 kilometers per hour. The benchmark, placed there by themselves, is what is purported to be the fastest production car in the world, the I mean, Bugatti Veyron. Obviously, because the figures I got, that was 9.22, but of course it's... Uh, okay, the figure that you... Yeah, that, the official that, the, that, is that the claimed figure? was 9.22, mm. yeah. So Potentially the car is going to be, could be substantially quicker than a Veyron between 100, 100 and 300. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the benchmark and, and, and yeah, I think, I think 0 to 100 has become a fairly academic figure in this day and age. So we need to look at, we need to look at 100 to 300 and, and I think potentially we've got a car here that'll, that'll beat a Veyron 100. Certainly looked, certainly looked yeah. and sounded good. So well, it we looks like we've got some very good news indeed. Um, there's your, your fastest run, 100 to 200 kilometers an hour in 4.3 seconds. That's very good. The 200 to 300 in 9.22, we did this in 7.63 seconds. So that's, that's substantially right. faster. And uh, 100 to 300 in 11.93. Sure, <laughs> that's even... Even better than I hoped for. So we did, we did the sub-12 that we were hoping for, and those look like Veyron eating numbers to me. That's definitely the case. Fantastic. I'm going to show you with the cell phone, and I can switch the backfire on and off. We can select the high and lower power levels. Easiest to show is just the backfire on and off. We've got one set of maps, which has got 10 different maps in it for different things, for timing and fueling and boost control and extra injectors, whatever we want to do with it. But of those we have five sets. The control of the vehicle via the Unichip goes far beyond what is first imagined. For example, using a mobile phone to call in a backfire. With the same product. And if I put it into the Toyota, the Unichip can be set up that it knows it's in the Toyota and it will be correct for that. And if it's in a Subaru, it will know it's in the Subaru. But then further I can select these map sets 